I would like to invite Embraer's Mark Neely, VP Sales and Marketing to the stage. Mark, thank you for being a diamond sponsor of this event. We appreciate Embraer's longtime commitment to ensuring this event is a great success. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. Good morning. So uh, I, th I think there's, there's a slide coming up here. I was, I was gonna wander around because I, I hate, hate sort of standing here behind the, the podium. But I, I was thinking about how, how I approach my remarks this morning and I decided I'm, I'm gonna treat it as, as if I'm an airline captain and I'm gonna go through a checklist. Because you know, checklist is how sometimes people understand how to get from A to B. And um, so I'm captain obvious, right? It's obvious what we're facing as an industry um, in terms of the challenges. And so, uh, you know, if we have the slides, please, um, I'm, I'm going to sort of go through, go through that as, as we think about it in, in that context. Every good announcement talks about how, how it's a great day to fly and how beautiful it is, right? So we have a beautiful um, image of, of Washington and the tidal pool, and that's, that's where the beauty ends, because it's ugly. It's, it's ugly for... For the industry, it's ugly for the communities that we serve. Next slide, please. If, if we look at it from the, the perspective of what regional aviation means to, to the uh, U.S. marketplace, and it's, it's not just aviation, it's about connecting communities that aren't otherwise connected to the world and to, to the business as, as a whole. 90%, 90 of U.S. cities rely on regional aviation for, for their service, right? It's, it's, it's a key cornerstone to how they can be a sustainable and vibrant community. Next slide, please. You know, there are, there are people that think that this is uh, a way to negotiate in terms of talking about uh, the pilot shortage when it's actually hard numbers, right? The, the reality is pilots are not entering into the space at a, at a pace that we need them to be following the pandemic. It's, it's real. And, and how does that affect us? If you do the simple math. Now, before the pandemic, we probably all used in, in, in our negotiations on our business, we probably used 10 pilots per, per airplane, right? But the reality is because of the movements that have to take place, it's, it's, it's more of a dozen pilots per airplane, which means that in essence, we are looking at in the neighborhood of 630 regional airplanes that are parked. Not all, not all of them parked at the same time. It's not, not a hard case because obviously you're trying to utilize the, the assets as, as much as possible, get the green time off of everything else. But the reality is this is 600 airplanes that aren't serving the economy that could otherwise be making a difference in terms of connecting people. We've, we've seen it in terms of the cities that have, that have fallen off the maps um, in terms of, of service. It goes without saying that that, that, is, that is real. That, that is, again, that is what is happening if, if we allow this to keep taking place in terms of losing service, losing the connectivity. It's, 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 I, I know I sound like a brokered record, but, but, but that's the actual fact. You know, there, there are... This conference is, is called the Leaders Conference, right? And, and the leaders in this business here today spend the vast majority of their time in trying to figure out how they keep this connectivity going. It's not, it's not a, something they go out for a couple of days and, and, and then it, go, it goes away. It is on everyone's mind in terms of how we keep aviation relevant in this marketplace. So, some of the things that have occurred in, in the last few months is, is looking at how, uh, ways we address it, right? We, we can do it through um, trying, trying to obviously get more people into the system, but that's going to take time. We can also do things in terms of the retention. That takes money, and that, that creates a long-term uh, burden in terms of how, how, how the, the business can, can be sustained. We go to the next slide. If you look at it from, from, from our perspective in the, in, in the regional space, so 76 seats was what, what obviously we at Embraer focus on. Costs of, uh, for pilots have gone up 68% on average, and that's, we're almost uh, with across the board in terms of people making the moves on, on costs. But that's, that's what's happened this year. What does that mean is, if you look at it in terms of just the, the variable cost of the airplane, it's disproportionate in terms of this segment for what the cost is to operate the airplane. Again, 
we want sustainability in this business, right? We want sustainability from environmental and all, all the other things that are important, but we also want sustainability in terms of reliable and dependable transportation for, for people and communities. Next slide. So the last piece as we look at it from, from a OEM perspective is how can we address that? And we, we believe that ultimately technology can help play a role in this in terms of what the airplane can do and provide to, to the people flying the airplane. So with that, if you look at the roadmap for Embraer, um, what we've put out there, next slide please. Um, we have what we believe, again, sustainability is, is a sustainable and, and very pragmatic approach to how we believe regional aviation will, will evolve over the, over the next 25 years, basically. It's important that we at Embraer have a long history of delivering what, what we say we're gonna deliver. And so that's why if you look at some of the timing here, some of these airplanes and the technology are sort of out there much longer than what some other people might be saying in terms of what can be achieved. Again, it's, it's a pragmatic view for how we get to where we need to be as an industry and as, as a manufacturer, again, to be sustainable and, and a, a vibrant contributor to aviation. So with that, I, I, the last point I'd say is this. As we look at our next generation turboprop, we believe that uh, there, there's really ways that we can enhance the safety of operating an airplane through technology. You know, it, it's, in some ways we've, we've, we've shied away from it in terms of trying, trying to get there. But the bottom line is not, not only can you get a safer uh, mode of flying the airplane, you can also have a much more consistent and reliable way of flying the airplane that brings value to the airline. And again, at the end result, being there for people to be able to fly to where they need to fly. So we certainly believe that Embraer is, has been a long-time member of, of the RAA and, and this regional and, uh, community, and we intend on continuing that path with delivering new technologies and new solutions for all of us to, to move forward in the decades to come. So with that, thank you. Appreciate you flying with us, and hope you all have a great conference. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mark, um, both for your generous support and also for sharing those insights. Couldn't have said any of that better uh, myself. And although the challenges are, uh, are vast in front of the industry, partnerships like yours make all the difference.